So, welcome back, guys, to Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. I'm Nintendo Capri Sun, and in the last episode, um, figured out what I was supposed to do here. But I actually, like, I had an outro for that, but I made the mistake of presenting the Magatama at the wrong time in the thing, so I lost some health because of it. So, but we're gonna try this again. Dun 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 so, Wait a minute, we don't have any sound here. What? Okay, sorry about that. I didn't want to leave that. I just had a weird scratching sound whenever I adjust the volume. Not sure why it does that. I think I need new speakers. Of course, I've been using these ones for about five years, so that would make sense. Anyway, where were we on this? The man who died had a lottery ticket for half a million dollars, which just so happens to be how much you're in debt. So it's like, well, gee, what's the point? Cash the lottery ticket, pay off your debt, then what? You're still at zero. So life still sucks. So what's the bloody point? Aw. Oh. Well, we need to fix this up. Why didn't you tell me about this sooner? My son laws, what are you Canadian all of a sudden? Mm-hmm. Alright. You think the winning ticket was stolen by this person? I believe there is a very high probability that it was you. <laughs> it's like the opera lady sings and the glass shatters. It's kind of the visual I get there. Why, you have no evidence? <laughs> Alright. Now see, I presented the Magatama here, which I wasn't supposed to do. I was supposed to present the haiku first. Yes. Then the Magatama. What is this, a poem? Oh, Monsieur, you know me so well. We've already heard this. Mm-hmm. You deny it. Do not make la false accusations, s'il vous plaît. Do you have any proof? <laughs> wow, I think I should have started a little later in the conversation here. Seeing all this that we've already seen. It seems old habits die hard, Mr. Armstrong. What is that? This is my Magatama. And you don't make boss got so what are you doing with it? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> well, it broke something. I don't know that much. Mm-hmm. It just slips out. I can't stop it. That's what she said. Well, yeah, I'm 17. But it doesn't mean I go around acting- well, I actually, I do act like one, don't I? <clears throat> so I guess I have no choice. I don't have any right to speak. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see here. There you go. Deep in the red. Well, shoot. Yes, it would have. Come, Bluey. <laughs> All right, give me back my health. Don't you just love that ad with that girl? That's like I don't even remember what it's advertising. Some store where you go to get stuff, and there's like a seventy percent off sale. She's just so hot, Mr. Armstrong. Yep. He had a ticket. It was worth half a million dollars. And you want it. Man, your arms are muscular. Yeah. He was listening to the radio. Maybe somebody was, like, giving him directions or something? Huh. <laughs> Oh. No. So you didn't put the poison in his coffee, but did you take the ticket? You took the ticket after the fact. Maybe the ticket is fake? 
I mean, what are the odds that a person scratches a half a million dollar winning lottery ticket and then just topples over because of poison? Yeah, you just keep picking at that rose, man. I'm, I don't know. You didn't? Or did you just take one of them? Huh? I mean, you'd have to be looking pretty close to see that it was- Well, no, no, because he didn't announce that it was a winner. Now, who we got here? Is it that girl? Holy jeep, what are you doing here? Oh my god, man! Are you hungry? This is without a doubt the worst coffee I've ever tasted, Mr. Armstrong. <laughs> well... <laughs> but in that case, Maggie shouldn't be the only one under suspicion. Yeah, really. He had the wrong ticket. Oh. So, the half a million ticket is sitting right there and he picks up the wrong one? So he won a dollar. He won a dollar. <laughs> well, neither do I. But that's an interesting question. The movie. Boy, you act like this is all just some video game or something. Oh. Oh. So we threw away Victor's note. So that was a nice little haiku. I mean, you could at least keep it and put it on your fridge. You know, as a memento. What was- I'm wondering about that girl we saw in here. Is it possible she came in and stole it? Yeah. Jeez, I, I didn't know I was that close to the end, good lord. If I just kept going, well... Yeah, save. Saving at full health. Nothing feels better, my man. It's like using a tent in Final Fantasy. January 7th. Oh, I see. Guess I should have expected this. Nobody saw the other guy, huh? No, nobody did. But he was there when I took the coffee over, sir. Scout's honor. Scout boot. Oh. Detective Gumshoe! Oh, the field. <laughs> Not right now. Not for me. Oh, but he cares so much. <laughs> and you! Yes? You'd better square this case away. Got it, pal. Maggie's innocent, you hear? If you screw up, then I'll be doing some squaring away myself. Ooh. You can't arrest me for losing a case. <laughs> well, let's hope so. Of course. I got the situation under control. I'm going to be the first witness on the stand today. Okay. But you're not even involved in this. Like you weren't... I don't know, dude. <laughs> you sure can. Looks like it should all go pretty smoothly today, huh? I can only wish. Well, so far, so good. I like the atmosphere of this one so far. I like it. There's something about it. It's just... Enticing. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. Did you hear that? The defense is ready, Your Honor. Oh, cup number one. Starting over. Mr. Um, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Ah! What's wrong? Did you step on a tack? 
nothing, it's just whenever I addressed you in the previous trial, your response was, "Use talking to me? It was a little, well, intimidating. I would have thought you were a taxi driver. That wasn't me, that was the phony phoenix. Nope. Alright, let's hear the opening statement then. So it's a good thing you weren't facing off against the phony phoenix, maybe you could have told the difference. <laughs> oh, what? Well, I'll show you. I need to blow my nose now that we're good here. Oh, everybody hates you, Phoenix. You think you'd be used to it by now. Okay. Well, I don't know what evidence was presented in the last trial, so... Obviously, there must not have been much, considering... that Maggie got found guilty. Well, then again, we kind of have been told, to some extent, what happened there. Witness, state your name for the court. Like we don't know who this guy is by now. This guy is more famous than Donald Trump by now. Did he just say occupation dick gumshoe? <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, I'm the officer in charge of this case since yesterday, sir. Huh. Yeah, really. So, Detective Gumshoe, what's up? What would you outline for the court of the basic facts of the case? I didn't read that sentence right at all. The victim's name is Glenn Elch. He was a professional programmer. He was on the payroll of Blue Screens Incorporated, a local company. This is the victim's autopsy report. <laughs> okay. You mean this wasn't in the first case? Here are the floor plans of the restaurant. Good. I like floor plans. When the incident took place, the victim was sitting right here. The poisoned coffee was brought over to him by the, um... By my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. The victim died from poisoning almost immediately after he took a sip. <clears throat> At the time of the incident, there were two other people in the restaurant. You, and the old man. Okay, so far so good. Still seems to be a very straightforward case to me. Okay. Hmm. No, don't tell him to do that. You don't realize, man, he has feels. Big ones. Alright. Witness testimony. What are we gonna... I didn't see anything wrong with that. When the incident took place... Wait, why isn't it green? Oh, okay. This is the first time. Okay. Potassium cyanide? Why not just cyanide? Well, no, she didn't have a motive. We're gonna have to press that. Using the dark aromatic depths of coffee to conceal the poison. You like that, don't you? Oh, he does. <laughs> this is ironclad. This is the mother of all promises. Please, no intimidation tricks. What a... I... That wasn't me! that was. The victim was alone at his table. We understand the guy going else was listening to the radio. I want to find out about this. He was listening to his radio, you say? Yeah, he had a portable radio in his chest pocket. Yes, he did. Um, doesn't seem like there's much to that, though. 
Oh, how's anybody supposed to know? Well, what was it tuned into? How should I know? <laughs> this isn't going very well, is it? Hmm. Yeah, okay. Boy, you think they would have at least looked at where it was tuned into. Because that would be like... Like, if it was tuned into a certain station... I mean, you wouldn't at least take the earpiece and put it in your own ear? Okay. About this. I've heard of that chemical before. Isn't that what they put in bananas? Except without the cyanide. Okay, is it Mac legal? <laughs> Eat too much in your history. Probably just a couple drops. A lethal dose is 0.2 grams. That's about enough to finish anyone off. 0.2 grams, jeez. That's like a drop on your finger is basically what that is. <laughs> Earwax, huh? <laughs> Get some more Q-tips! Such a small quantity of poison could have been concealed anywhere. Mm -hmm. Alright, what do you got? Some kind of a motive. Yeah, but if you ask me, it's been blown way out of proportion. Uh, we didn't ask for your opinion, right? Chuck out a bad cup of coffee, you can always get another. Dude, don't tell him that! He's saying there's other starfish in the sea. Oh, or that too. Alright. She was. They said she wanted to steal a lottery ticket. I knew it. Yeah. Wait a minute, she passed out though, right? So wouldn't she have still had it on her? Mr. Armstrong knew about the ticket, too, didn't he? But he stole the wrong one. Then is it possible Maggie stole the winning one? What should I do? I think we should. Wait a minute. The mere fact that the lottery ticket disappeared in no way implicates my client. <laughs> I have here in my hand. Oh, no. You have it. Well, let's stop this trial and go cash it in before it expires. Conducting a search? No. No! Yep. So it was, so she did have it on her. But once again, the, it was probably planted there. We already think the poison was planted there. I know, dude. <laughs> Just show it to that other judge and see what he does. He might go buy some Terminator with it. What? That did not make any sense at all, I know. Huh. Okay, where was it found? I really think there are any contradictions in this testimony? To be honest, I don't know. But Gumshoe told us out in the lobby. He said we'd be forming a united front, right? I prefer Delta myself, but to each his own. How will we win the case if he doesn't know throw us a line? Yeah. Okay. Well, we didn't press this, or the third one, I think. Traces of poison. Maybe we need to press them all. So, traces of the poison were found in the coffee cup and nowhere else? Not sure I get you, pal. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so it was powder. Objection. Yeah, stevia. <laughs> No, but I put sugar in it. 
I'll put equal in it. Black with no sugar. Yeah. Seems the poison could have only been put in the coffee. Wow. It's really giving me a lot of press harder moments here. Are you absolutely certain that the victim even drank any of his coffee? Huh. Yeah. That's true. You got a point there. <laughs> oh no. In case you were wondering, that last objection was for the detective there. What? Oh hey, you're right. You may be fooling the court, but I'm not falling for it. If you have the time to waste, you have the time to present that piece of evidence. Huh? What's he talking about? Well, how many pieces do you have, dude? <laughs> uh, well... Oh, now I remember. This is the, uh... Victim's Coffee Cup. Bam. Mm-hmm. It's unmistakable. Those are lipstick marks. Oh, okay. Conclusive proof that the victim did drink the poison coffee that was in this cup. Just like I'm about to do, hopefully. <laughs> you gotta be so dramatic about it. For the record, the only prints on the cup were the victims and the defendants. Shoot. Alright. Upon further investigation of this cup, we found a certain chemical substance. Okay. Alright, I guess I better go back and press the first one. Just in case. <laughs> Can I stop you for just a minute? Huh? What is it? <laughs> he just wants us to get him so bad. Your testimony just now doesn't match the testimony given by Miss Bird. She claims that there was a second man at the victim's table. No, not a second one! Oh. Well... <laughs> yeah, well, they're all old, and one of them probably is the one who did it, so of course they would disagree. Oh my god! Look at all this! I should have started with the first statement, I guess. Maybe the other witnesses just missed him. Perhaps their view of the victim's table was obscured. Yes, it was! No, it's not. There was a divider between the tables. Ooh. A ticket. Did you get that for speeding? Oh, no, 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 no. Show me! Guiltyville, population the defendant. That was lame, but okay. This is a photograph taken from near the entrance to the kitchen. This is the scene as witnessed by the chef moments after the poisoning took place. I think the court will agree that with such a clear view of the scene of the crime, how, Mr. Trite, could anyone have overlooked a second person at the table? They could have been... cooking? I mean, he's not standing there staring out the door as he makes his stuff back there. Hmm. And the divider pretty much means the old man wouldn't have known. Okay. You do. Well, it's a... Uh... Yes, can you, like, give that to me? Yeah, you might. 
Not good, Nick. The evidence against Maggie is starting to pile up fast. It is not. It's all good. What's that, cup number three? Should call you Cuphead, you know? 